I don't know how long this thing has. It says photo booth. It's an app. I don't know. But let's go for it. I like to say, first of all, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And we see changes in our world as we speak. I like to talk about the fact that the 400 years is up. Next year, 2019 is a wrap. You could see signs when you see a little boy who's accused of molesting a grown woman. A nine-year-old boy was accused of molesting a grown woman. After the woman saw the tape and it was ran back, she saw the boy didn't molest her at all. It was his book bag that touched her butt. Generally, our people are the most forgiving people on the planet Earth. If you offend us, even if you kill our children, kill our mothers and fathers, in the name of Jesus, we always forgiven somebody. The paradigm must have seriously shifted. Something seriously changed because this little boy is basically out there saying he's not going to forgive this lady. And I believe the implications for that are major. Very serious implications for that. We have to look at everything that's going on around us. Right now in Sierra Leone, a United Nations truck just turned over recently. And this United Nations truck had so many millions of dollars worth of raw materials from Africa. All right. So you have all of these organizations, whether it's UNICEF, Red Cross, Blue Cross, United Nations. It's all a farce. Anybody operating in Africa that is not African does not have your best interests at heart. Everybody wants to rape, manipulate and rob from Africa because, again, they see you as the feet of society or the lowest element of society. Already Trump is over here talking about. Yeah, the Native Americans, we took the land from them and we're not going to apologize for it because they were savages and we made it into something better. So this is the mentality of the devil that we're dealing with right now on the planet Earth. And because his days are numbered and the curse on my melanated people is over. And yeah, I say my and people, you know, a lot of people in the Hare Krishna movement will say, well, caprice isn't a bodily concept. Well, I like to say that I'm not really a part of the Hare Krishna movement. I've never been initiated. And I never swore allegiance to the Hare Krishna movement. I could say I have allegiance to some of the things that Srila Prabhupada taught. And I could see that if the Hare Krishna movement is not going to take advantage of what Prabhupada had to share, I'll take advantage and I'll use it to raise up the frequency of the lost found people on the planet Earth. And we'll show you what soul means. We'll show you what Lord Chaitanya's golden age means. And we will show you what the paradise on Earth means. First, we have to deal with the plague that's going around the planet. When the Gentile man got loose, started running around the world, he started changing religious doctrines, he started changing everything, and made itself into a clear and apparent enemy of the human race and all life forms on the planet. So I'm just reiterating some things to let you know what you have to embrace and what you have to push out the way. That little boy who refused to forgive that lady, he's pushing out the old ways of his ancestors who were um under the slave system of manipulation, who felt that if they don't forgive their oppressor, that Jesus is not going to love them. Right now, we ain't even waiting for Jesus to return. <laughs> ain't nobody waiting for Jesus to return. We all know that the scriptures say that there will be a coming in the last days and times of the Son of Man. There will be avatars. There will be the Kalki avatar to end this dark age of Kali Yuga and bring in the new Satya Yuga. And along with him, there were some demigods who took birth. Apparently, these demigods, they have expanded forms as well. And there's people on the planet Earth right now living amongst you, eating, sleeping, drinking, possibly buying weed from you. And they are actually expansions of demigods. And they're just waiting here. They're waiting on this planet so that after Kali Yuga ends... And Lord Kalki destroys the enemies of God. These beings, and they're in different races and different body types, by the way. These beings, these demigods are actually going to rule on the planet Earth. They're going to administer. I don't want to say the word rule. Let's say they're going to administer the affairs of the planet Earth. And again, the paradigm has shifted. You saw the sign of Tekel. You could, sorry, you could see the evil going on in Africa right now between China United States of America is all of a sudden interested again in Africa. 
they're sending their boy Kanye over there. And, you know, if you know the science of Avadut, so Avadut is a person who's seemingly mad on the outside and probably is 100% mad. However, they're also touched by the divine. Now, when you're dealing with transcendental reality, when you're dealing with transcendental truth, you got to realize that transcendental energy can utilize a good man or a bad man or an in-between man. It doesn't matter. And it can use a, utilize a woman, a child, even an animal to get for Transcendental energy is beyond the material manifestation and beyond the mind. So even if a person is materially mad, as a lot of people believe that Kanye is mad, it doesn't matter because he can still be used to plant seeds. Like nobody in the history of earth before has planted a seed in a president's face about reparations. You might've said it on the internet. You might've wrote him a letter. You might've spoke to the United Nations, but I've never heard of anybody sitting in front of the president talking about reparations until Kanye pops up. I still don't trust him. You know, the boy looked like he's an MK ultra. He had the blonde hair and all of that after he came out of the, um, <laughs> the re-education camp. I call them rehabs are nothing but re-education camps. That's, you know, my personal opinion. They, they just re-educate you and rewire your brain so that you think you don't need drugs no more when that's not the actual problem. See, a rehab can't really do nothing for you because they're not working with your spirit soul. They're just working on your subtle body and they're working on your gross body, but they're not working with your spirit soul. So you're not really going to get liberated from drugs until you make that choice to get liberated from drugs. And seek the help from a supernatural source. I just would like to admonish my people to get ready for the changes that's coming. Because there's a prophecy that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And a lot of times we hear these prophecies and we don't look at them for what they are. What is the first? What is the first in your everyday existence? First world countries. Countries like USA. Great Britain, France, you know, basically all the places where you take your hard earned money and spend it on vacation to go to France. And those are called the first world countries. You go to London, you go to Rome, you know what I'm saying? We go, we go to DC. This is where we spend our money at the first world. But the first world is going to be made last, which means the last world is going to be made first. So you see BRICS, the BRICS nations are making moves. India is making moves. Brazil is making more. Brazil is so ill right now. For every book that their prisoner reads, they have to do a book report. For every completed book report that is deemed satisfactory, Brazil reduces your crime, your, your time by four days. So they're rewarding people for getting educated in Brazil. Meanwhile, in America, we're taking schools away. Like, I've been working in the school system for four years. I could tell you, I could see the effects of Kali Yuga happening on this planet right now. When I look at the children and the education level sloping downwards. And unfortunately, a lot of the administrators in the school business treat it just like it's a business. These children are not human beings to them. They're commodities. They're numbers on a piece of paper. I'm just telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? These children don't matter to the admin administrative body of the education, the um, pedagogical structure. And I'm not calling nobody out on a local level. Like, let's say, you know, I don't want the principal at the school where I'm working at to feel no kind of way. It's not really about him. This goes way above his head. This goes to that Betsy DeVos or Betsy Ross, whatever that lady's name. I don't, I don't follow these people, you know what I'm saying? But Betsy DeVos doesn't know anything about education, but she's the commissioner of education. Just like your boy Ben Carson doesn't know anything about housing, but he's the commissioner. So your government can't be trusted. It's just a bunch of rogues and thieves. And thieves. All of these things were spoken of in the Sri Mad Bhagavatam, the 12th canto. Please read the 12th canto. If you need the link, I'll throw the link up. 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, also known as the Bhagavad Purana. It speaks about the nature of all of these people that's running your world right now. But rest assured, Tekel, the sign, has been shown on the wall, and they've been found lacking. So the first world is about to be the last world. Let's, let's, let's look at it this way. America can't survive without African resources. 
America is not in South Africa mining. They're not mining in Europe and they're not mining in Asia. They're mining in nowhere but Africa. The whole world needs Africa and Africa does not need the whole world. And I'm reiterating that strongly so that our people can have somewhere to go home after America faces her judgment next year. You know, so around 2020, America is going to see a real serious judgment. I mean, forget all that black stuff, that biblical prophecy stuff. I mean, you got eclipses crisscrossing your country. That's never good. That's not a good sign. When eclipses go like this over your country, that means it's a wrap. Just go back into the astrological star charts. They're all there. All right. America's done. We're going to need somewhere to go or we're going to have to rebuild this country right here. Unfortunately, we got a lot of ignorant people that we got to deal with, but a lot of them are going to die off in the nuclear holocaust that's coming. It's going to be a short war, but more than likely we're going to get some nuclear conflagration. And it'll be quick, and those who survive will be more receptive to transcendental knowledge and the recoming of the feminine aspect of goddess energy because one thing when you're dealing with African civilizations and melanated civilizations, they put their goddesses first. They put the woman first. They say Hare before Krishna, stuff like that. They put the goddess first. So now that this feminine, caring, and nurturing energy is coming back to the planet, there's going to be no more space for the patriarchal energy. So there's going to be a new world order, but it's not going to be the, the male-dominated, phallic-worshipping new world order that we're accustomed to for the last 6,000 years or so. So I like to say, yeah, watch out for the United Nations. They're raping you. Don't give your money to Yousef, UNICEF. If you know somebody named Yousef and he's related to me, then you could give him your money. But like UNICEF, don't give them your money. Don't give no money to like um, Red Cross, Blue Cross. They're raping you guys. Like, let's let's put an end to this. Be like that little boy in Brooklyn who's like, I'm not going to forgive my enemy. We got to get like that. I mean, you could turn the other cheek when it's reasonable. You know what I'm saying? But how long are we going to keep turning the other cheek? And we're the only ones that turn the other cheek. You know when a black person commits a crime against a white person, a white person and they ask for the final verdict in, in the judge and ask, does the family have anything that they want to say? The lady's like, I hope... The mother's like, I hope that animal rots in hell. He should burn. He's an animal. He's a savage, a barbarian. But when you kill a black person, child, the mama is up there coming straight from church. She still got the Palm Sunday fronds in her hand in the Bible, open to Psalm 23rd. She still got that fan in her hand, and she got the thing over her head with the veil over her face. Coming from church talking about she want to forgive somebody who just killed her child, her only child. This is the kind of mentality you have. It's a good mentality if you're in a loving, reciprocal world. But for the war that we're in, you can't keep forgiving your enemy because your enemy is going to think that it's perfectly okay to do this kind of stuff. I'm not with that. That's not my kind of religion. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to the Hare Krishnas and the Jehovah's Witnesses again. It's the black people that you rejected that is actually going to be the fulfillment of all of your desires. You can't get a paradise earth until black people wake up their Jehovah Witnesses. And you cannot have Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's golden age until the black people wake up. Because it's simple. Black people are the soul people. And if your Hare Krishna religion is all about singing and dancing, then you got the wrong people out there on the streets. If you want to attract people, you need to get the singers and the dancers. You know what I'm saying? So listen. If I'm going to be shucking and jiving, and if I'm going to be cooning, I ain't cooning for no white boy. I ain't cooning for no Indian, no Spanish, no human beings. I'm not cooning for you. I will coon for my creator, though. Because when you coon for the creator, actually, it's a transcendental activity, and he's cooning for you. He says so. He says that to the extent that you surrender to me, I surrender to you accordingly. So I ain't got no worries about singing and dancing, Hare Krishna, and doing the Harinam Sankirtan, or chanting Allah's names. I don't have no problem with that. I have a problem with religious subjugation. I got problems with people telling me my history, who haven't researched my history, don't know nothing about my history, and are coming from a one stand. So this is what's going on in my life right now. I'm at a point where I've I'm, I'm beginning to assimilate the religion, the spirituality, the science, the archaeology, and the common sense, and the good intentions, and the good activities. I'm coalescing all of these sciences into my life so I could become a greater being and be a greater example for others. Forget the past. You know what I'm saying? The past is the past. I'm going to the forward, and I'm taking 
my people to the future with me because I've already thoroughly studied and lived the principles of St. Kofa. I've already thoroughly studied and lived these principles of religion that people are dying to join and dying to kill their fellow man over. Man, I've seen some Pakistanis hold down a cow. Hold down a cow in the street and slit its throat just to get Hindus mad. I'm like, do these dudes even know what they did to their own personal karma just to mess with somebody of another religion who might not even believe in that religion tomorrow? All you humans are fools, man. Just surrender. Surrender to the Supreme. And he has representatives here. And when Kali Yuga comes to an end, now here's another thing. Because Kali Yuga is 432,000 years, and the year before that, the age before that was Dwapara Yuga, and it was twice that amount. And the age before that was Treta Yuga, and it was four times the amount. And the first age, which was Satya Yuga, before that was eight times as long. When you got these kind of astronomical numbers, you got to understand that Kali Yuga would take a long time to end, about 429,000 more years before the end of the world, as we know it. However, we live in some strange times, and time has been sped up. Them boys down in CERN, Large Hadron Collider are playing with time. There was an earthquake that shortened the day that made time shorter. Yeah, it's all real. That earthquake that caused the tsunami was so strong. The tsunami, not the one for Japan, but the Indonesian tsunami. I don't know if it was 2006, but that earthquake actually made the day shorter and the earth spin faster on its axis. And like I said, everybody notices that time is speeding up right now. So what you have is 432,000 years might only come down to 20 years. Now, we're looking at a point where the earth can't be sustained much after 2020. So I'm just going to be real with you people of planet earth. The devil has to stop ruling. The devil seed has to stop ruling by 2019 or 2020. We just can't allow the European nations to keep running the biosphere into the ground. So mother nature is working on our behalf, the spirit realm, the ancestors are working on our behalf to clear our path. Ganesha Eshu is going to clear these Europeans from your path. You know? And for anybody who wants to think that I'm spreading a message of hate, I could care less. Give me all the thumbs down you want. This message is not for you. Your time is up. I'm speaking to the people who are the future of the world. Like Africa is the continent with the babies. Now they got this ugly lady getting on a plane. What's her name on? Melania Trump looking like a lizard going over there trying to talk to the babies. Babies don't want to see you. Babies want some education. You can't even talk English. You, they can't learn English from you. So just stay over here. Stay in D.C. Stay in the belly of the beast for when the fire comes and y'all can eat the fire. Y'all love to share fire, so you're going to eat the fire. But Melania Trump, nobody needs your help. Leave the African babies alone. We have enough African women over here, no matter what neighborhood you in. As long as there's rich European people or wealthy European people, you can see enough African or diaspora descended ladies taking care of their babies. We could send those women over to Africa to take care of the babies. All right, we don't need you. Stay over here. Gosh, and that, that brought me to a point that I really wanted to bring up, and it slipped my mind. It had to do with our babies and the future and Africa being the youngest continent. Um, brain fart. Well, listen, I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you to let you know, be encouraged, and let's use intelligent guidance so that we can um, use our resources on this planet very properly. You know what I mean? But yeah, chase the devils out the motherland. There's no, there's no need to be afraid of them anymore. Their time is up. You don't have to shuck and jive. You don't have to hold your head down. You don't have to be afraid of them. You know, some of us are going to die. That's natural. But they know their time is up. They know they're living on borrowed time, and when they see you every day, they fear you even more and more. So you keep your people out of Africa, and let Africa build itself up and prepare for the exodus, the returning home of those who were chased out of there, who fleed from there, when, of course, the Gentiles ran over and ransacked Jerusalem. If the thought comes back to me about what I was going to share pertaining to millennia, and our women taking care of the babies of foreigners. If the thought comes back to me, I'll be sure to share it with you. You know what I mean? If I sounded like I was babbling during this video, I probably was. But I appreciate you listening anyway. And as always,
please chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.